Uh, what we have here is our U Fetch. It's a dog ball thrower uh, connected to your phone. So you can use an app on your phone to throw balls out of your dog ball thrower. Uh, up here in the front, we have a obstacle detection and two rollers. Coming in the back, we have a hopper where you can load your balls in, multiple balls, so you can toss a couple of them for your dog to go find. And the whole assembly will turn at 90 degrees, 45 to the left, 45 to the right. Go ahead and turn it on. Here we'll show the uh, video display here. So this is running on my, uh, my Android tablet here. This is just a web page that's available from any you know, smart phone device or you in your computer. And this is fully interfaced directly with that. We can go ahead and spin the motors up by just clicking start here. And we're going to run a nice and easily 1,000 RPM where you, literally the ball falls out of the front, but it's a good safe starting point. And the slider up here on the right will crank up the speed. Let's go ahead and let's see what we can do about 3,400 RPM. So we go ahead and get a nice gradual build up to the desired speed. And uh, we want to do a little rotation here. So, so we'll go ahead and show off the rotation here while it's building up speed. So it's going to go ahead and find its home position. It's running a stepper driver. So you know, stepper has to know where everything's at. And it'll go ahead and return back to center once it's home. And then we can go ahead and uh, move it where we want. But you can notice that our RPMs are there, so it's saying balls. Our uh, motors are good to go, no ball presently. So it's, it's ready for a ball to be in you know, the machine so we can go ahead and launch it. I don't know where we're going to launch it here. Okay. Okay, all right, we're going to go ahead and launch it. So it says motors are good to go, ball is present, and launch ready. <laughs> Light go ahead and put it and turn green once everything's good. Now splash that forward as the motors kind of hunt a little bit. Once it's green and everything's set, we can go ahead. And there you go. Good launch. Now we move left a little bit or right. So let's see here. We can pick our angle we want to move to. So let's move it to the left a little bit and we'll rotate. There you go. And I've got to hook up to the speaker here. We've got a nice shotgun blast sound that plays out of the device you're using. So that way you get a nice. <laughs> Real exciting sound, you let you know it's, it's firing. I will go ahead and take our max speed and see what we can really do here. Uh, all right, we'll go ahead and move over to the right hand. <laughs> so, you know, it has to detect that there's a ball in there before it'll let you launch. Servo that releases that ball, but it's fast enough where it can catch the second ball and prevent multiple launching. You can have multiple piled up. Uh, we're good at speed. There we go. We're a little more distance out of here. There we go. Uh, well, we have two uh, brushed DC motors. Uh, we use uh, or these are actually uh, bow rollers for uh, boat trailers. That we decided to use for the tennis ball launcher. Um, each one of the motors, is, uh, as it's spinning around, we have a hollow effect sensor in here that picks up a little magnet that we embedded in the rotor, so it gives us RPM. Uh, we go back and we have some code that we wrote into the Pi that as the RPM spin up, we give it an RPM signal. We say we want 5,000. It starts reading the encoder, takes counts, and it adjusts the power level of pulse width that it gives the motors to hit that RPM level, so it's closed with control in the RPM. We needed that because we had to get both of these spinning at the same RPM, otherwise we get a weird curve on the ball. Um, and because the resistance of the bearings and the assembly is different in each one, we couldn't give them both the same power level and have the same RPM output. Um, we have an IR sensor up front here, that was our obstacle sensor. The idea was that you didn't want to launch a ball or you wanted to know if there was an obstruction before you hit the launch in case the dog's face was in front of it or anything like that. Um, so that um, is indicated on the tablet right before you hit launch. Stepper motor is what drives the rotation. Um, we have a center pivot pushing. The stepper is mounted right up underneath here, belt driven back and forth. There's a home switch mm -hmm. underneath the table that hits the little uh, switch post there. Um, we run it both off of 12 volts and 5 volt supply for the Raspberry Pi. Um, we wanted to keep the 5 volt separated for the Pi so that we didn't have any reboot issues. So the main logic is actually done and accomplished by a Raspberry Pi, which, if you're not familiar, is a uh, uh, it's a Linux computer, but it's basically like a smartphone just on a little breadboard, but it's got things like video output, and in this case, networking and USB. So we're, we're taking advantage of the networking and the USB in this case. And it also has about 20 input output pins. So the input output pins are what runs. Um, it's off of this ribbon cable here, driving this whole breadboard. 
So the Raspberry Pi directly controls um, the stepper rotation as well as the servo that's up here that releases the ball, um, along with the USB control to the um, speed drivers. And so that's all connected here, and then we connect it to the CSU's network actually. And so anybody on CSU's wireless network could access our interface, authenticate, and be able to you know, control the device. Uh, we use a I to C expander to, in order to get even more input output pins off of the Raspberry Pi. Um, we have some voltage regulators that drop our 12 volt high current source down to 5 volts in order to run things like the stepper and the servo. Actually, the stepper with the 12 volts. The thing that we put into the project is actually controlling the infrared sensor and taking in all of the analog uh, data that, that puts out and then converting it to a digital signal that we can then send to the Pi. Uh, here's our Raspberry Pi and the PIC. Uh, IO expanders. Motor controllers, 5 volt power supply. The IO expander is doing the IC to IDC communication. This is the stepper driver. This is our repository of code. This is the Python code that's built on the Raspberry Pi. So this handles low level logic such as controlling the motors, creating the RPM values, uh, and everything along those lines. So in specific, we can look at um, the motor control. And so here's all of the code for running the motors. Uh, in specific, we've got things like here's our algorithm for determining how we should adjust the motor speed to solve our closed loop feedback control. We, we get the current RPM, RPM that we're looking for, and the current motor requested speed percentage, and we'll adjust that up or down depending on if it's outside or inside of our RPM desired range. There's um, everything's just running through a while loop that continuously runs in order to keep calculating and saying, okay, is everything good? Okay, wait a 100 milliseconds and then run back through, okay, so everything good, and it changes things. We've got, um, we use interrupts on the call effect sensors in order to get our data as soon as there is a rotation. There's an interrupt call, and so that's this code here, and it, what it does is it stores the time, and then every time there's an interrupt call, it stores the difference in time since the last time it was called, and after five iterations, it'll take that and average it and then calculate an RPM. To run the web page, we actually have um, PHP code. Uh, and inside that PHP code, it runs HTML. So this is the HTML to generate the web page. And what you're seeing here mostly is JavaScript. And that's what allows us to do all the updating live without refreshing the web page. So everything queries, um, everything queries a backend server in order to say, OK, speed the motor up, set the rotation, Turn the motors on, turn the motors off. There's also stuff in there for you know looking at what uh, RPM values are there and what status messages. And so down here at the bottom, you can see somewhere up there, right here. We can see all the actual output and what it looks like on the web page. And this is the HTML code for that. Okay, so launch functions right here. So it checks to see if things are ready. So if there's no, you have to make sure the toll pole switch is on. You have to make sure that the motors are running and the motors are at the required speed and then also that there's a ball present. All of those steps have to be met before we let you launch a ball. So when we do launch, it queries you know, using what's called AJAX, a backend called launch ready. That's this guy here. And it looks for it and as long as it gets a response of one, then we set ready equal to one and run the do launch method. The do launch method is sent here and it just calls the same backend value with the launch a value of one. And that what everything that it's everything that it takes in order to do it, and then the backend code runs through all of its stuff to open the um, servo and launch the ball.